guys. Welcome to Live Inspired by Randomness Family. My name is Ryan, and I came to bring you an unexpected message because I hadn't planned on doing this one. This was supposed to go out next week, but we're live, and um, I didn't have plans for it, but apparently the Lord did. It's called The One Who Is, Who Was, and Is to Come. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Hallelujah. And the reason why I'm talking about this today is because it's a lot of things that are going on in our world. It's a lot of things that people are worried about. I've heard people say that, um, you know, they're afraid that they can accidentally take the mark of the beast. And I'm here to tell you today that that's not possible. That thing that we call the jab, the, the shot in the arm, you know, I can't mention every term because apparently our federal government is in collusion with Facebook and all these other social media platforms. And so as soon as you say something like that, you get this little uh, message on your post. As many of you guys have seen, talks about that word um, that the shot relates to. But this jab, this thing, the shot in the arm, <laughs> is not the mark. But it is conditioning the world for the Antichrist system. And it shows just how much power the government can have over the people. And it actually shows how much people are willing to put their trust in the government. And let me show you why, because during the, the seven year tribulation period, which is also called the 70th week in Daniel's prophecy and God's terrible wrath, every newly converted Christian during this time will know without a shadow of a doubt about what the mark of the beast is. The Bible says that there's even an angel. There's even an angel in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, verse nine. It says, then an, a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. And they have no rest day or night. Who worship the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. Whew. Whew. That was a lot. I'm here to tell you that the righteous will never suffer God's wrath. Neither will we meet the Antichrist, but we will meet Jesus Christ. Now, this doesn't mean that he won't be in the world, but we won't see him. We won't know who he is. He will be revealed after the rapture. Satan has had many failed attempts in trying to rule the world and take over from the pre-flood generation in Noah's time to the Tower of Babel, King Nebuchadnezzar, Mussolini, Hitler, Stalin, and even the modern day dictators. But one day soon, he will be successful in raising up the Antichrist, who many believe, like I said, is already alive, could be. But in order for him to be revealed, the church has to be gone. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 through 7, it says, And now you know what is holding him back. He's being held back. So that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness. That's what we see all that lawlessness out there. It's a secret power to it. It's already at work. That's the Satan, power of Satan. But the one who is, now holds it back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Jesus is not afraid of Satan. We shouldn't be either. No matter whether he's in a physical form or a spiritual form. But some people make the mistake of the terms in this scripture. When it says he must be taken away to mean like the Holy Spirit. But that's not talking about the Holy Spirit being taken out of the world. And I used to believe that uh, the Holy Spirit would be taken out of the world. But he will still be operating in this world. The term he means the body of Christ, the church, who represents Jesus Christ in the earth. We will be removed from the earth. We can also see in the book of Revelations that after chapter 3, the church is no longer mentioned. And this is the event known as the rapture. 
which is described in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50 through 52. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 7. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 through 10. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, 1 through 2. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6 through 7. It's a lot of scriptures that describe the rapture. You'll never see the term rapture in, in the Bible, maybe unless you get a, a Latin version of the Bible or something like that. But it's the um, the Greek word is harpazo, which means to be caught up or snatched out of this world. And I mentioned that before in my in my videos. And the uh, Latin word is uh, rapturos or rapturus. I'm not Latin, apparently, obviously. Um, but John in the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 6, he says, Then... He said to me, these words are faithful and true. You got to believe it. Jesus talked about his coming. He said, all of these signs that we see, and I'm going to continue with the scripture. He said, all of these signs that we see in this world is no mistake. He talked much about the last days rather than just the times that he was living in when he was on the earth. He told people about what was coming. Even in 70 AD when uh, Jerusalem would be destroyed by the Romans. He even talked about that. He didn't want people to be situated and comfortable in the life that we're living in right now. Too many people are hooked up with the cares of this world. But it continues, it says, And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show his servants the things which must shortly take place. It's about to happen soon. Can't tell you when, but when it happens, hopefully you'll be in heaven. Revelation chapter 22, verse 10 through 11 says, And he said to me, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. That means the time is near. He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. You will be what you are going to be when Christ returns. Make no mistake about it. Choose ye this day on whom you're going to serve. I know that for, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. We have dedicated ourselves to the Lord. And you can make no mistake that these things, everything that you see, is going to get worse and worse. We're going to see more Satan worship because that's who the wicked serve. We're going to see more perversion, natural disasters, more violence and persecution and government collusion as we see with our social media platforms. They want to shut up anyone who uh, disagrees with what their agenda is trying to push. I was thinking about this question of why won't God stop every evil that Christians face? Why does it seem like we have some victories, but then we have some losses too? And it wasn't something that I was like, man, you know, this is bothering me or something like that. But it's just a passing thought. You know, you have those thoughts. But the truth of the matter is in order for God's prophecies to be fulfilled, in order for that to happen, he can't just stop all evil. Okay. This is actually what, what it takes, the increasingly wicked and lawless conditions of this world is what it takes in order for our redemption to be brought to us and the end of days to occur. Our trials lead to our victories, as I said in my last video. It wasn't a lie, but it was a, a regular video. You know, our trials lead to our victories, whether we live or die. Many of our brothers and sisters in Christ are dying out there. In Afghanistan, um, before they did the big pullout, or at, right after they did the big pullout, there was a whole congregation that was slaughtered by the Taliban. A whole congregation. Just imagine your local church being slaughtered by terrorists all at once. But the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14, it says, Blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life. Yes, that still exists eating some food off of there too and may enter through the gates into the city but outside of the dogs and sorcerers that's those who do drugs that's where that term sorcerers is um i believe it's pharmacia but it's it talks about it's talking about those who do drugs and sell drugs and use drugs and uh rituals and uh sorceries and different things like that that's the reason why you see the term sorcerers and the sexual immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie, these people will be outside of the kingdom into everlasting torment. And Jesus says, look, 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, strength, and mind. And he made a promise to us in the last chapter of the book of Revelations. Jesus says three times, I am coming. Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Jesus says, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is the one who keeps the word of the prophecy of this book. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 says, he says again, And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. And he says again, I am the Alpha and the, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He said it in the beginning of the book, and he says it at the end of the book. He says, make no mistake, this is who I am. He says, I am who I say I am. And you are who he says you are. Then nobody tell you different. And Revelations, in the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 20, the third time he says, <clears throat> it says, he who is faithful, the faithful witness to all these things says, yes, 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 I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. That's what John said. He said, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. That's what we should be saying. That's what we should be saying. But uh, we kind of like that parable when Jesus, he gave about the, um, the the man who invited a bunch of guests and they had all these things to do, all these excuses to make. He invited them to his, his uh, banquet. And they just couldn't make it. They had all these things to put in place of that event and they were left out. He, went, he said, go to the highways and byways. Go out into the streets. Grab people off of the streets. Invite them in. If they don't want to come, I need my house filled. So if you don't want to come to Jesus, if you don't want to um, devote yourself to God, listen. God is not sitting there like, man, you know, there's no hope. No. God is always working. And he's working in the lives of every person. To bring those who will believe in him and put their trust in him. We got to surrender. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24. When you see all these things happening, look up. He says, don't look to your left or to your right. Don't try to see what the next person see. He said, I have given you eyes to see if you have put your faith in Jesus Christ. And the way that you can see is by reading his word. I can't stress that enough. If you're not in his word, it's just a simple principle and a spiritual uh, discipline that we have to have of just studying God's word. We get to find out who he is. In the book of Revelation, chapter 9, verse 15, it says, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm moving ahead of myself. <laughs> okay, so God has it all planned out, right? But let me show you exactly how serious God is about his timing. Now pay close attention to the scripture. Revelation, chapter 9, verse 15 says, Then... The four angels who have been prepared for this hour and day and month and year were turned loose to kill one third of all the people on the earth. Hour, day, month, and year. That's how precise God is about these last days prophecies and the times of the end. And this was referring to the sixth trumpet, I believe in the book of Revelations, he has three sets of, of judgments, three sevens. He had the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. These things will all be released upon those who are on the earth who have received the mark. The truth of the matter is we will be here one moment and we will be gone the next. The Lord will sound his trumpet. And all those scriptures that I pointed out to you about the rapture, go ahead and read them. Write it down. Take a note. He's going to sound his trumpet and in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment, in a flash, the dead and the living in their turn will be snatched out of here. Just like he did for Lot, snatched him out of Sodom and Gomorrah, just like he did for Noah. He shut the door of that ark and they were in and all those who were outside were judged by water. This generation is being reserved for fire. His fire is coming down. And the world will not be prepared for it. Jesus says in Luke chapter 21, verse 26. But keep alert all times at all times. Be attentive and ready. Praying 
we need to pray more. As we see the days approaching, we need to pray more and more and more continually uh, without ceasing. It says, but keep alert at all times, be attentive and ready, praying that you may have the strength and the ability to be found worthy and to escape all these things that are going to take place. And to stand in the presence of the Son of Man at his coming. That's the Amplified Version. And lastly, brothers, sisters, aunties, uncles, cousins, nieces, nephews, friends, and strangers. If you're watching this video and millions of people have vanished, then you have been left behind. The rapture has occurred. Turn from your sins now and turn to Jesus Christ. The world will come up with all kinds of ways to explain what has happened. Do not believe it. What the Bible says is true. And what it says will come to pass. You will face seven years of terrible times if you live that long. The only way to make it now is to keep your faith in Christ unto death. And you will go to heaven. God is good, saints. All the time. And all the time, God is good. The main purpose of this life is to get us to heaven. It says we're citizens of heaven. We need to support our brothers and sisters who are going through it right now. Whether it be here in the United States or in any other country. They have um, different places you can donate to. Operation Blessing, Convoy of Hope, Samaritan's Purse. These are very... Uh, Highly respected organized Christian organizations that um, are credible and they're trustworthy. But listen, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7 says, For yet, in a very little while, he who is coming will come and will not delay. God willing, 